In this presentation, we're going to start a discussion of logical equivalence. And what that means is we want to come up with ways to look at two logical statements, like the two examples that I have here, and to answer the question, are these statements logically equivalent? Are they always going to produce the same results for specific values for their, their individual smaller statements? And the way we're going to do that, and this is going to be the topic of this presentation, is by creating what are called truth tables. So the idea here is I want to be able to look at a statement like this, and I want to be able to look at a, a set of specific values. For example, this is the kind of thing that might have that I might have seen when I was doing software development. I might be told if a business unit meets this condition, then do have the program do one thing and if it doesn't meet that condition those conditions then do something else for example flag it as being underperforming uh, let management know tell them what they need to do to fix the situation and so forth so when the program actually runs it might have a circumstance where the profit is greater than ten thousand dollars so this statement is true sales were less than five thousand dollars but net revenue was not less than four thousand dollars so the first two statements are true and the third one is false so now the program has to decide based on these three results is the entire compound statement true or false because if it's true, it's going to go into the first branch, and if it's false, it'll go into the second. So the way, the way we're going to approach this is through what are called truth tables. And a truth table is a summary of the values of a compound statement for all possible values of its component statements. So you know that, that's a nice you know, math definition, but uh, then let's look at some examples and we'll see how this kind of actually works in practice. So here, I have a, a very, very simple compound statement. It's just our logical OR. And I want to create a truth table for this. So the way I've done that is I've started by making two columns for our input variables, for the P and the Q. And in the rows, I've written out all of the possible combinations of the values of P and Q. Now remember, P and Q are logical statements, so they can have only two possible values. They're either true or they're false. And what I've done here is I've written all of the possible combinations of true and false. And you can stop taking a minute and confirm that for yourself if you like. If you think about it, you, you should pretty quickly see that there aren't any other possible combinations of those two letters. So now what I'm going to do to complete the truth table is I'm going to fill in T's and F's in this last column. And I've put an English statement up here for us to, to kind of help us along in figuring out what these values should be. And to do that, we're going to rely on the English definition of the word or. In English, when we say it's raining or I'm wet, that means one or the other of those statements is true. Possibly both of them are true. So if you look at the first row, if it is raining and you are wet, then this or statement is true. I mean, if, if you had somebody walk into the house and said, it's raining or I'm wet, and you could see that they were in fact wet and it was raining outside, you would say that the statement was true. Now, under the second row here, Suppose that the second statement is false. Again, if you have someone walk into your house and say, it's raining outside or I'm wet, and they're visibly not wet, but it is raining, then you would still say that they had made a true statement. With an or, it's sufficient for just one of the statements, one of the parts, to be true. So by that same argument, this second line here, must also be true because at least one of the the parts of it is. 
And now on this last line, we have the case where both statements are false. If both statements are false, then the compound statement is not true. So I'll put an F here. And this gives us the final truth table for our basic compound logical OR. Now on the next two slides, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do this for the logical AND. And I'm going to do this for the negation. And those three truth tables are ones that you need to know, that you really need to internalize or, or memorize. And I don't want you to think you have to sit down and just say them over and over again to yourself until, until you, you memorize them. But as you do problems with these, as you start writing truth tables, you'll find that these are really important. These are the, the fundamental tables that we're going to use to, to build up larger ones. So it, it would be a good idea if you were, if you were, you know, get out a piece of paper and write these down just so you can have them next to you while you're, while you're working on problems. Uh, it might, might help to, for example, put them on index cards. You, know, you can lay the index cards out in front of you when you're working on problems and have these available that way. So let's go ahead and look at the next statement. This is the logical AND. I, I've started our table off the same way. I have our two variables and all their possible values. And I have our logical AND, the P and Q with our little AND symbol. And I've got another English sentence here that we can use to kind of parse our way through this. So in this case, we're, we're, we're going to use the English interpretation of this word again. If it is raining and you are in fact wet, then we would say that a person who came into your house and said this had made a true statement. So we'll put a T here. Now on the other hand, if they came into your house and said, it's raining and I'm wet, but you looked at them and they were not wet, you would say that they had lied, that the statement they had made was false. Similarly, if they came into your house and said, it's raining and I'm wet, but it wasn't raining outside, you would have said again that they had lied, that that's a false statement. And, of course, the same argument holds here. If it's if it wasn't raining and they weren't wet, this would also be false. So that's the truth table for a logical AND. All right, so that brings us to our last one here, uh, the logical negation. This is much like um, a minus sign in algebra. The minus sign had the effect of reversing whatever it came after, and it's going to be the same thing here. If a person came into your house and said, it's not raining, and you looked outside, and in fact it was, you would say that they had lied, so their statement was false. And if, if, you, if they came into your house and said, it's not raining, and in fact it really wasn't raining, you would say that they had made a true statement. So that's the truth table for a logical negation. It just reverses the sign of whatever came before it. So, I've summarized those three tables here. And it's like I said a few slides back, the, these are ones that you need to have kind of at your fingertips. Um, probably written down at first, you'll put them on a piece of paper or index cards, and eventually as you do problems, these, you'll internalize these and you won't need to refer to those notes anymore. All right, so now that we have these three base tables, let's look at how we can go about using these to create truth tables for more complex statements. So here I've, I've got our logical AND, excuse me, our logical OR, and I've put a negation in front of this. So I want to see how we're going to create the truth table for this. Well, the process is similar to what we did for, for the smaller ones. I've made a table, and I've started it out with our variables, and I've listed all of the possible combinations, just like I did before. Now what I've done for, for the remaining columns is I've made a column for every variable and every symbol. And I'm, I'm going to fill in these columns one at a time until we get to the end, and that'll be our conclusion. So the first thing, the first step is an easy one. You just go to all of the variable columns, 
and, replace, and, and fill those in with the same values that they have over here. So I'm going to go to the P column here, and I'm going to replace, and I'm going to fill this in with T, T, F, and F. Those are just the values from our base P column. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here in the Q column. I'm going to replace this with true, I'm going to fill it in with true, false, true, and false. Again, I, I just duplicated the values that were in our base Q column. So now I need to start filling in the remaining columns. And when you do this, there's an order. I mean, this is kind of similar to the order of operations that you learned in algebra. You start by doing things that are in parentheses. Then you do negations. Then you do ands and ors. So that following that order, I have to do what's inside the parentheses first. And the only thing left inside the parentheses to fill in is this logical and. And to do that, this is where you need to, to get out that table that you wrote down or put on an index card. And you're going to go to that table and you're going to look for the row where P and Q are T. And if, if you look at that row, the value of the and is a T. Then if you go to your and truth table and you look at the TF row, that row's value is false. And if you look at the FT row, that row's value is false. And the FF row, that row's value is false. Really, all I did here, and I'm going to flip back a couple of slides, all I did here is I replaced the values in that column with the values from our logical AND table. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, you really don't need to fill in columns for the parentheses. I, I included them there. Really, you're just we're just going to do the columns for the logical operators. So that leaves us with one column left. That's this negation column. And if, if you think back to the negation table, this negation has the effect of reversing the value of its input. So the, the opposite of true is false. And the opposite of false is true. The opposite of false is true. And the opposite of false is true. OK, now we've filled in the columns for, for every logical operation. And this was the last one that we filled in. So this one is our end result. This, this one lists the the output values, the result values for this expression for all of the possible input values. Okay, so let's let's look at one more example. This one again is, is a little more complex still. Now we have three instances of the variable. But we're going to follow the exact same process. I'm going to start by replacing everything in the P column with the values from the base column. That's true, true, false, and false. And I'm going to do it over here again for this P. This is going to be true, true, false, and false. And I'm going to replace the Q column with everything from the Q base column. That's going to be true, false, true, and false. All right, so now I'm going to follow my order of operations for, for logical expressions. I'm going to start by going into the parentheses, and I'm going to look at this logical OR. And I'm going to replace this with the values from the logical OR table. The logical OR table says true and true evaluates to true. True and false evaluates to true. False and true evaluates to true. And false and false evaluates to false. So now I, I've evaluated everything inside the parentheses. And at this point, you, you could almost disregard these two columns now 
and this middle column gives us the end result for the entire parentheses. So now I'm, I'm going to move outside and my order of operations says I have to do this negation next and that's going to have the effect of just reversing the sign reversing the value I keep thinking like this is algebra and it's a negative sign it reverses the value of everything after it so the trues become falses and the falses become trues so now once again you you can kind of disregard this column and look strictly at this one. So to get the final result, to get the values of this AND column, I'm going to compare the values from the result of the parentheses to the values of the result from the negation. Again, using my AND base truth table. If you look at that table and you look at the row that has true and false, You'll see the true and false evaluates to false. True and false here, that's also false. True and true in the AND row evaluates to true, and false and true evaluates to false. So this is the last column to be filled in which makes this our final answer. This is, this is the end result of the truth table. This tells us what the value of this expression is for all of the possible input values. So this is the end of this, lecture, of this presentation. Um, in, the, in the next one in the series, we'll look at how we can use truth tables to, to answer that original question. How can we tell when two logical statements are equivalent to each other?